Estimates are as high as 37 to 44 percent of prevalence of, uh, of inmates and prisoners having mental health problems. There is some indication that the criminalization of mental illness is more prevalent in urban settings than in rural settings. Brian Stevenson, the author of Just Mercy, estimates that over 50% of human beings in prisons behind bars have some sort of mental health problem, and 20% have some sort of serious mental problem, mental health problem, such as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, or major depression. A 2017 report by the Bureau of Justice Statistics estimated that 54% of prisoners and 35% of jail inmates who had some sort of major mental illness before going behind bars received any treatment mm. once they were behind bars. So we're talking so again that's 54% about half and 35% in jails. That's those are not high numbers of people who have diagnosed major mental health problems who are not being treated once they're behind bars. Gemini, you, I mean, get. I can I can see your wheel spinning over there. Yeah. I can see your wheel starting to spin. I'm trying to like uh, grasp you, around those numbers, right? Do because, they sound right to you no, from your experience? Because I believe that the numbers are higher than that. You know what I'm saying? Because you're taking what you have heard about, or what that, that you're taking something that from the intake screening when you first go in, they ask you particular questions. So everybody that's going in there for screening is not going to tell you that they're suffering from some type of mental illness. Well, I, do you think you knew? I mean, you spoke pretty clearly to this word trauma, and I'm I'm drawn to that word because of of my background of the work that I do. But do you think you knew? So, like, if somebody's asking you a question and saying, do, "Are you anxious? Do you have anxiety?" I mean, when I say that walks through my office, right? A lot of times, because of what we know the brain will do, we will live a certain way for long enough and things become normalized. Like I'll say, are you anxious? I'll be like, I'm not anxious. And then I'll give them some sort of screaming and, and they'll come off, off the charts anxious because our brain becomes used to something. So as I hear you describe growing up you know, a, around violence or within a, within a culture that that was prevalent and in a daily interaction, did you then know that you had experienced trauma? Would you have said... I have PTSD or I'm traumatized. No, I, I want to say that like you would have had to give me more years. Right. So, so even so, answering that question when you come in. It, it, that's, you, my, yeah. that's my point okay. exactly. Yeah. So do you do the rescreening again about this? It goes back to what you said. You become prevalent of mm -hmm. believing that mm -hmm. you never had, you never mm -hmm. suffer from trauma. Mm -hmm. Until we start doing surveys or taking tests or. Or, or giving someone something to, to, to go off of, we would never know the real number. But I'm here to tell you that that number is totally incorrect because j just from experience, just from experience, like if people like me who have suffered from trauma never existed, you wouldn't have a job. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. we actually get this information from what I quote unquote, the one word that I hate that we use nowadays and that's data that's all the world goes off of is data graph charts so we have we are now programming the brain to think that data means human mm. right so we're forgetting about the human being and we're just looking at the stats statistic numbers data graphs charts not saying to ourselves that this is a human being i'm talking about and it becomes easier for you to do your work when you're just looking at data. Even you can forget that the human being exists mm -hmm. because you're just looking at data. So technically, you could be suffering from something. Oh, we already knew that. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> when, we look, when we really look at everything that sits around us every day. It, it seems to me that the, the people who are behind bars, so you've got... A lot of people have mental illness before they end up behind bars. I mean, that could be part of the reason that they mm -hmm. uh, make the choices that they do. Exactly. Yeah. But then there's the trauma and the mental health illness that develops behind bars. So people who may go in with a relatively healthy brain, or maybe it exacerbates. Is that? Am I thinking of it the right way? I mean, do, uh, I mean, do you see that because people? I would I would say probably like like sixty sixty to sixty five percent of the people before they committed the crime probably was suffering for something, right? So you compound that by 65% of the people that are walking in the door having a mental mental health issue, right? You compound that by the individuals that are already in there, mm. right? Who have over the years, right, developed 
some type of trauma mm-hmm. while living in there. That's why it's no such thing as prisons. You right. take 65% of the people walking in the door into a nut house, excuse my French, because I know they don't like to use that, but until that's what I call prisons, though. I'm not really talking about the actual medical uh, health places that you go, but I'm talking about the prisons. You take 65% of the people and just dump them off into there where already people are already walking around just out of their mind. 